to microbial notes i am excited to share my insights on the topic of india ink staining a powerful technique for visualizing microbes hi students and my fellow research enthusiasts i am binish rashid a post graduate microbiologist and now i help other students to quickly learn complex microbiology topics and simply achieve higher grades if you are as curious about microbiology as i am check out microbial notes your go to online platform for insightful information on microbiology so let us first discuss about india ink staining how do we discover the external structure of a microorganism the answer lies in india ink staining technique itself in this presentation we will discuss about the application the principle composition requirement and preparation procedure of india ink staining and obviously the microscopic observation and real result interpretations advantages and limitations comparison of india ink staining with other staining techniques and last but not the least quality control of india ink staining Ink staining is a technique that unveils the exterior structure of microorganisms. Now, why is this technique crucial in microbiology? Its significance lies in its ability to offer a clear and detailed view of the outer structures of microorganisms. Let's talk about the technique itself. That is negative staining. Instead of coloring the microorganism. We take a unique approach by coloring the background. This leaves the microorganisms unstained, creating a high contrast scenario. India ink staining reveals the external structures and categorizes microorganisms. Without waiting, let us discuss about the principle of India ink staining. The India ink staining technique is based on the negative staining principle, which states that the dye is used to stain the background while the microbe remains unstained, resulting in a clear image against a dark background. The India ink stain is composed of microscopic opaque carbon black particles floating in an aqueous solution. Because the carbon black particles do not penetrate the microbe. it remain unstained and visible under the microscope the capsule is non ionic the india ink used will not bind to it as a result the capsule appears as a clear halo around the yeast cells now let's have a quick overview of the application of india ink staining cryptococcal meningitis highly affects in immunocompromised situation such as hiv as the symptoms of cryptococcal meningitis occur they are confirmed with diagnostic testing it involves observation of yeast cells along with lymphocytes during a cerebrospinal fluid cell count additionally gram smear and india ink staining become valuable in this investigative process India ink functions as a negative stain in the process of iron negative staining. This approach allows us to visualize capsules that are transparent and usually resistant to traditional staining methods. It helps in the diagnostic and characterization of microorganisms. Cryptococcus neoformans takes the lead followed by Klebsiella pneumoniae and Streptococcus pneumoniae. it helps in identifying microorganisms particularly cryptococcal meningitis where it highlights the encapsulated structures to delve into the requirements for preparing india ink let's break down the component first of all deionized water is purified water without ions in it it ensures a clean base for the ink preparation then comes thimerosal that is a preservative used to prevent microbial contamination in the ink after that 
black pelican drawing ink number 17 is the core ink ingredient critical for achieving the desired staining effect. After that comes Negrosine. Negrosine stain or India ink is the primary staining agent. Clean or grease free slide and cover slips. That ensures a clear surface for staining process. Then comes CSF, cerebrospinal fluid, that is taken as a sample to be stained. Droppers or a loop for inoculation are tools for precise application of ink. Bunsen burner is used for sterilization and to prevent contamination. Waste disposal container is used for safe discard of unwanted materials. Centrifuge is used for separating components based on density. And then we have some specific microorganisms such as Cryptococcus neoformans as the positive control that ensures the staining process is working as expected. Okay. And Candida albicans is taken as the negative control that helps to verify the staining process doesn't produce false positive. These optical conditions ensures that the India ink staining procedure is conducted under favorable environment and the results produced are accurate. And other very important slide because as the student of microbiology we all shall know how to prepare our own India ink stain. So in conditions of uncertainty we all shall be prepared to create our own India ink to perform the staining procedure. Cerebrospinal fluid should undergo centrifugation for the duration of 5 to 10 minutes. Okay. This process separates the sample into different layers based on density. And after centrifugation, the top layer of supernatant is removed. This step eliminates the liquid portion leaving the sediment behind. The removed supernatant fluid is then combined with the sediment to ensure that all the relevant components are included in the staining process. Next come slide preparation and for this you need to transfer equal amount of India ink and the sediment to the slide. Combine the sediment and India ink drop on the slide. This mixing step is crucial to ensure an even distribution of the ink over the specimen. So after that when the sediment and ink are mixed place a cover slip. This step is essential for creating a thin and even layer for microscopic examination okay and then use the 40x objective on the microscope for detailed observation of the stained sample so what to look under a microscope when analyzing sample stained with india ink particularly when searching for cryptococcus that is a type of yeast you need to look for oval or round cells okay that should be regular in size number one ranging from around 2 to 10 micrometers in diameter number two this is how stained cryptococcus cells with their capsules look like under the microscope as far as the positive control the presence of encapsulated yeast confirms the validity of the staining process in the negative control the absence of encapsulated yeast ensures specificity and reliability of the India ink that we have prepared. Moving towards the result interpretation. As far as result interpretation is concerned, we need to observe number one is positive control, number two is negative control, and then the visual identification of the encapsulated yeast. In the positive control, you need to observe the presence of encapsulated yeast, which will confirm that the India ink staining process has the capability to distinguish between the external features of the microorganisms. In the negative control, you need to observe the absence of encapsulated yeast. In the positive control, there is the presence and in negative control, there is the absence of encapsulated yeast. In negative control, the absence will assure that the staining process has the accuracy and the capability to distinguish between stained and unstained microorganisms. 
there as individual identification of India ink staining. What we will observe under the microscope is what is the shape of the microorganism and what is the morphology. Either the microorganism is regular morphology or it is in the form of growth. What is the size of the microscope? And the fourth and major thing is that either the encapsulated yeast is surrounded by a large unstained capsule or not. Now moving towards the advantages of India ink staining. This technique is very simple to perform. And this staining method requires minimal equipment. Process is cost effective and doesn't demand an extensive array of specialized tools. And the third thing is that India ink staining provides a vivid, very good and high contrast view of microorganisms exterior structures. This technique enhances the visibility that allows us for a clear observation of morphology of microorganisms under the microscope. And next, India ink staining is capable of displaying a vast variety of microorganisms including bacteria, parasites. The versatility of the staining method makes it applicable across different types of microorganisms. And the fourth is that heat fixation is not required for India ink staining. Okay. Emitting the need for heat fixation is beneficial especially for fragile structures of microorganism because in heat fixation having the delicate microorganism structure by not requiring it India ink staining or preserves the integrity of the delicate features of microorganisms. Moving towards the limitations, number one is that it is the presumptive identification of microorganisms. Okay. It suggests that India ink staining is a preliminary step and it requires additional tests such as biochemical, immunological, molecular or mass spectrometry for complete identification of microorganisms. Otherwise, India ink staining itself is not enough. Then comes the, the potential misidentification. There are many other such as fat droplets, white blood cells and tissue cells can be misidentified with cryptococcus neoformin. Okay. So the solution is uh, taking a drop of 10% potassium hydroxide and uh, disintegrate leukocytes and tissue cells to avoid any misunderstanding. And some cryptococcus neoformans and other cryptococci strains do not develop visible capsules. This is an other limitation. This variability of capsules among different strains impact the reliability of testing. Next comes this technique is limited to observe only the external features of microorganism. After that, the microorganisms with sufficient are challenging to observe clearly under the microscope using India ink staining. India ink staining is negative staining technique. It is often used in conjunction with other staining procedures such as gram staining or acid fast staining. Okay. Unlike gram staining and acid fast staining, India ink staining does not require heat fixation. India ink staining does not reveal information about the microorganism's internal structure, whereas gram staining and acid fast staining techniques are helpful in providing the internal details. Instead, India ink staining is useful for only visualizing the exterior structures of microorganisms. India ink staining is simple with ease of use and no heat fixation requirement. Whereas gram staining is the most complex involving multiple steps and heat fixation. And acid fast staining has intermediate complexity and moderate skill requirements and heat fixation. Now let's emphasize on the importance of quality control when using India ink staining in microbiological process. The quality of the ink, number one is used is crucial for accurate staining outcomes. It contributes to the reliability and precision of the staining process. Number two, the pH of the staining solution should be stable to prevent variation that could affect the reliability of the result and number three the culture used for staining should be well prepared and of high quality for getting accurate results moving towards the fourth one contamination which obviously introduced errors in the staining procedure adherence to suitable trial practices minimizes the risk of contamination 
and the last one is the microscope that must be properly calibrated and regularly maintained to ensure accurate visualization of stained specimens and finally why does quality matter the staining outcomes need to be consistent to build your confidence in the accuracy of the results okay and uh, high quality practices including the use of fresh reagents sterile techniques and proper calibration of equipment shows the validity of the staining procedure and last but not the least seeking for quality in microbiology ensures that the observed structures are a true representation of the microorganisms and you are not producing fake results thank you feel free to reach out if you need further clarification on this topic and please share your feedback by dropping comments in the given section i feel so good by helping you learn difficult topics regarding microbiology remember what microbial notes always say that it is fun to learn together so stay tuned with microbial notes until i meet you with another exciting topic till then goodbye